Alam niyo po ba, sobrang nakaka-bless to hear from our partners, like, katulad po ng Binil, that they're really partnering with the uh, uh, Real Life Foundation to, for us to uh, help those people na less for, uh, uh, unfortunate, uh, unfortunate youth who can't really uh, go to school. And uh, every time po na nakakita ako ng scholar from Real Life Foundation, I'm really amazed because God is really using and move, moving in the hearts of those students. At maraming maraming pong salamat sa partnership ninyo, sa prayers ninyo, at maraming maraming salamat po for continuing reaching the next generation of our country. And uh, good afternoon po sa inyong lahat. My name is Christian. I'm one of the pastors here. And for those people tuning in online, magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Katulad po na sinabi ni Rochelle, um, ma- ano po, Independence Day natin ngayon, June 12, na sakto na, hindi lang siya tumama na weekdays, <laughs> tumama siya na Sunday, kaya hindi natin masyadong ramdam. Uh, alam ko, ini-expect nyo yan, eh, dapat Monday yan, dapat Tuesday. Pero dahil Sunday, sama-sama tayo dito magdidiwang na ating uh, Independence Day. And uh, I'm really excited for for today because we're about to start a new series. But before we start a new series, alam niyo po ba by next week, we're going to celebrate Father's Day. Sino dito yung mga tatay? Tatay, tatay, okay. Father, yan. We would like to encourage you to next week uh, to come here as well, together with your family. We have something for you. Meron kami pong hinahanda para sa inyo right after the service. Uh, magagather lang tayo ng quick, and then we have, we're going to give something. And I hope that you will really, because we really appreciate you. Alam ko, hindi madali maging isang tatay, katulad ng hindi maging madali maging isang nanay. Okay, di ba? Yung mga nanay, gumaganyan talaga eh. Agree-agree eh. Huwag mo kami kalimutan. Eh, hindi rin maging madali maging isang anak. O yan, para lahat tayo uh, cover. Yeah. <laughs> so, actually, um, nakakatuwa lang kasi, alam niyo po ba, for the next three weeks, pag-uusapan natin is all about family. And I really believe that family is very important for all of us. That's why yung series natin for the next three weeks will be As For Me and My House. Maybe some of you here, parang familiar sa akin ng saying na yan. Yes, nasa Bible po yan. Ah, hindi lang tinuloy. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Because at the end of the day, what we really want to impress in our hearts, that as a family, we will really honor God, glorify God, and even serve God. And we will understand that the God that we are serving, He has a calling for all of us. Not just individually, but even a calling as a family. So, ito po yung pag-uusapan natin. Kung paano natin mo honor si Lord at ma-anchor yung faith natin sa will at saka sa purpose ni Jesus sa buhay natin bilang isang pamilya. Sino dito sobrang na-appreciate mo yung family mo? Yan. Okay, sabi mo sa kanya, peace be with you. Okay, and then sabi mo, sabi mo sa kanya, I love you so much. Diba, sobrang na-appreciate natin yung family natin. That's why, for today, what we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about Genesis chapter 12. I would like to ask everyone to stand up. Uh, from verses 1 to 3 po yung babasahin natin. I hope you have your own Bibles. Uh, isa lang po ang pinag-uusapan natin dito. Hindi po social media, hindi po kung ano-anong article, but we're talking about the Word of God. That's why I'm encouraging everyone, you can download a free app in, uh, in your cell phone kapag uh, smartphone kayo. So free lang yon. Anong version maganda? Kahit ano, basta binabasa. Okay? And also, if you have a hard copy, that would be great then. So it says here in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 3, Nandiyan na po ba kayo? Sabi niya dito, Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your fa- uh, father's house to the land that I will show you. And I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a, bl- you, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and him who dishonor you I will curse. And, I, and in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Let's just pray. Lord, we just want to say thank you for the reading of your word. Thank you, God, because I know that it is you who will magnify your word. You will illuminate your word, God. I pray that you will bless the preaching of your word. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen. You may take your seats. Katulad po na sinabi ko kanina, pag-usapan natin ang family. So, let me just ask this question. What is family? Sino ditong 
nare-recall pa yung ating mga subjects back then na sinasabi natin, family is a... Ano ulit? Family is a... Basic, basic unit of the society. So, ibig sabihin nito, ito yung hindi natatanggal sa utak natin. Until now, alam natin, basic unit of the society. Pero I'm gonna try to look at it. Family is the basic unit of society. The question is, what kind of society do we have? Or let me just paraphrase, what kind of family do we have? If you will try to look at the social media, marami po tayong articles about family. And uh, isa po sa mga nakita kong article, when I, I, I was able to go to a specific uh, site, yung site po nito is teach, teachingbayan.com. Sabi niya dito, family is the canvas through which we paint our world. Parang gandang pakinggan, no? Family is the canvas. Pag sinabi natin yung canvas, ito yung ginagamit ng mga painter. Depende yan kung gusto mong one by one, may canvas na one by one. No? Yung canvas na sobrang laki, canvas na maliit, and through which we paint our world. If you will try to um, inculcate it into your mind, canvas, family, paint our world. The question is, who's painting that canvas? Sino ba nagpipaint ng canvas na yon? Social media has a big influence for all of us. Hindi lang social media, different cultures, hindi lang cultures, and even those people around us can define the family that we have. Alam nyo ba yon? Na yung tulad ng apelido ko, Cornejo, it's totally different from Aguilar. It's totally different from Raon. It's totally different from from uh, ano pa ba magagandang pa, ma, mga mga sis, ma, magagandang pang apelido. Siya mag Alegre. Wow, yung apelido mo talaga, no? <laughs> so, iba't iba talaga 'yon. At bawat pamilya may kanya-kanyang sinet na culture. Pero bawat pamilya din may kanya-kanyang way of living. At bawat pamilya din may kanya-kanyang pinanggagalingan. That's why, naalala nyo, sino dito mga married couple dito? Married couple? Yan. Happily married. Yan. Ay, umonte. Happily married. Oh, happily married. Di ba nung hindi pa kayo kasal, kapag hindi pa kayo sell, tapos eto na yung moment nung ikakasal na kayo, tapos nagsama na kayo sa bahay, makikita mo yung difference, differences na isang family to another family. Iba yung upbringing mo, iba yung upbringing nung husband mo or yung wife mo. Ibig sabihin, mayroong kanya-kanyang influence or sphere of influence. When we talk about family as a canvas, the question is, sino ba nagpipaint ng canvas na yun? Ano bang klaseng canvas meron tayo as a family? Ano bang klaseng picture of family are we building right now? In a society wherein they can define the kind of family you have, the question is, what kind of standard do you have for your family? At yung binasa po natin kanina is somehow similar to what we're going to talk about or what I'm saying, sharing a while ago. It's all about the story of Abraham or commonly known as Abraham. ba? Naalala nyo yung ano, nursery rhyme natin, Father Abraham. Ayun, kumakanta sila. Tuloy. Many sons. ba? Naalala nyo yun? So, kilala-kilala si Abraham and most of us here, familiar talaga tayo sa Bible character na to. And alam nyo ba, si Abraham, before siya maging Abraham, uh, meron siyang kapatid. Dalawa yung kapatid niya. Ang kapatid niya is si Nah Nahur at saka si Haran. At ay yung tatay niya, ang pangalan is Tera. So, lahat sila, they're settling in Ur, wherein yung sa Ur na yon, malapit sila sa, sa nasa Kaldians yon. And tung Kaldians na to, or yung town nila, which is the Ur, um, it's a busy place we're in textile yung isa sa mga common commodities nila. Tinitrade nila to fish and also hindi lang yon, in also different ano rin, different uh, ani nila. Ito yung ginagamit nila pang trading. But the sad part about that uh, place, they normally worship pagan gods. And at that time, si Abraham, he doesn't have any encounter with God. Hindi pa niya win worship si God. As in, wala pa talaga. 
So at that time, ito yung moment na they're just following the set of rules, set of culture, set of influence na binibigay ng tatay niya, which is si Tera. Ito yung context na binasa natin. Ito yung context wherein they're worshiping the pagan god and not only that, paborito nilang i-worship yung moon. Sino dito nag-worship ka sa moon? Wala, no. Nag-moonwalk lang po ako. Pero hindi ako nag-worship sa moon. Sample, si Roel magaling mag-moonwalk eh. Uh, so, so, yun. Try to imagine with me. This is Abram worshiping a pagan god because of the culture that was impressed to him and even to his siblings. Now, he will have an encounter with God. An encounter wherein it will change everything in him and even his family to the point to his de- descendant. The question is, in this world na meron tayo, kaya pa kayang mabago yung culture na sa set sa atin, yung influence na nabigay sa atin in one snap? Is it possible? And let me tell you this, yes, it's possible once you encountered the one true living God. And today, I'm going to share you three things. Three things na gusto kong tandaan nyo. Three words na isi-share ko sa inyo, but every word na isi-share ko, meron pa siyang sub-point. The first thing na kailangan natin maintindihan yung sa three words is the word calling. Calling. Ano tong calling na to? God is calling us to bless us and to be a blessing. When we talk about blessing, how many of you here, you want to be, you want to be blessed? Sino dito? Gusto mo talaga makareceive ng blessing? Biyaya. Biyaya. Yan. Lord, nakikita nyo sila, nagtataas ng kamay, di ba? So, biyaya ng Panginoon. Gustong-gusto natin yung biyaya ng Panginoon. But in the context of Abram, sabi niya dito, in verse 1 of Genesis chapter 12, Now, the Lord says to Abram, this is the encounter of Abram to, uh, encounter of Abram to God. Go from your country and your kindred and your father's household to the land that I will show you. At one moment of, of, of time of Abraham, he heard the voice of the Lord clearly. And God gave him a command. Now the Lord said to Abraham, Go from your, con- go from your country and your kindred and your father's household to the land that I will show you. Ano ibig sabihin nito? Ibig sabihin nito, God is uprooting Abraham to the old Abraham to a new one. God is preparing something for Abraham or Abram. Pero the crazy thing about this one, when God spoke to Abraham, sabi ni Lord, to the land that I will show you. Wala pang sinasabi si Lord kung saan siya, pupunta, kung saan siya pupuntahin. Ito yung moment wherein God is calling him to a place of unknown. An encounter with God telling him to go somewhere. At yung encounter niya to na sinasabi to go, hindi to madali kay Abraham. Why? First and foremost, nakasettle na sila sa town, sa town ng Ur. Ibig sabihin nito, lahat ng napundar nila, nandun na. Lahat ng kaibigan niya, yung family members niya, nandun na. At eto pa, kilala na sila sa place na yun. Try to imagine with me, from out of nowhere, sabi ng tatay mo, or nanay mo, o magulang mo, sabi niya, anak, from out of nowhere, tara na, maghangot ka, lilipat tayo. Tapos tatanong mo, Nay, Nay, tayo, saan tayo lilipat? Excited na ako. Hindi ko rin alam. Basta sinabi, lumipat tayo, lilipat tayo. That's the very condition. The very condition is, I want you to go to somewhere, but that somewhere is not yet known. Last week po, uh, for the past two weeks, naghahakot kami, naglilipat kami ng bahay. Sobrang hirap talaga. Sobrang hirap mag, mag, maghakot ng bahay. Ay, maghakot ng bahay. Bubuhati mo yung bahay. Diba? <laughs> maglipat, maglipat ng bahay. And how much more pa kaya yung biglaan? From out of nowhere, God can spoke to you. Then, sabi sa'yo, you have to move. 
And yung sinasabi dito na as you go from your country, sinasabi niya dito na yung security ni Abram is dependent already to the country where he was living. Yung security niya, yung identity niya, yung buong pagkatao niya, naka-define na in that country. But God is telling you, I want you to move. Why? Because they were worshiping pagan gods. And they were doing something that is not pleasing in the eyes of God. And not only that, the good thing about it, yes, sinabi ni Lord, I want you to go there. Pero pag pumunta ka dito, meron akong promise sa inyo. Mahilig tayo sa promise, tama ba? Pag may na tao nag-promise sa atin at sinabi, eto yung gagawin ko sa'yo, talagang, al- alam mo yun, kikiligin ka, mai-excite ka, gusto mo ma-experience yung promise na yun. And yung promise ni Lord kay Abram, as they follow and obey Him, sabi niya dito in verse 12 to 3, uh, verse 2 to 3, sabi niya dito, I will make you, I will make of you a great nation. I really like that. I will make of you a great nation. But the question is, paano siya magkakaroon ng great nation even in chapter 11, alam niyang barren yung asawa niya? The second, and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. Grabe to, ang tindi ng promise. Magiging great nation ka, then I will make your name great. Ibig sabihin, kung nakilala ka na sa Ur, makikilala ka pa sa ibang places. And hindi natatapos doon. In verse 3, sabi niya dito, I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you, I will curse, and, and in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. There are three promises that God is giving to Abraham. First is personal blessing. That he will be, he will, he, his name will be great. Second is descendant blessing. Ibig sabihin, even yung mga descendant niya, magiging mabibless to. And finally, universal blessing. Ibig sabihin, magiging blessing siya para sa ibang tao. So as Abraham follow the call of God, isa lang yung sabi ni Lord, Bless ka at mabibless mo ibang tao. But in reality, there is uncertainty. How will you know that you will be blessed if you don't even know where are you going? Di ba parang ang hirap nun? Have you ever had that experience? Yung feeling mo, Lord, sabi mo mabibless yung family ko, sabi mo mapopromote ako. Pero kung titignan mo, may competition. Ang gagaling ng kasama mo. Sila yun parating pinapatawag ng boss mo. Will you still claim the promise? Or in your family, kung feeling mo na, Lord, grabe, ito na naman si Judith. Parating na lang si Judith, nagpapakita, kinsenas katapusan. Kapag pumaki, nagpakita si Judith, nag lang ako sa, sa, sa alam mo yun, na-experience na ba yun? Ano? Yung nag ka na lang sa sweldo mo. Hi, bye. Experience niyo ba yun? Parang mag high bye ka na lang. Kasi naka, naka, nandun na eh. And you are claiming, Lord, sabi mo that you will bless me and you were able to bless not only yung ako, but even my family. Pero kung titignan mo yung sitwasyon mo, naputulang ka nga ng kuryente eh. Nakikitap ka na nga lang. Kapit-bahay, pwede mo makitap? Or sometimes you're claiming for healing for your family members. Pero kung titignan mo, parang ang hirap na, no? Kasi parang there's no solution with his or her condition. The question is, will you still appropriate the promises that God has for you? Sabi ko kanina, this is the calling that God has given us. The calling that God has given us, we are blessed so that we can be a blessing. The main reason you are not receiving that blessing is because maybe you're not appropriating or leaving the calling that God has given you. Question is, every time ba na meron kang problema na na-experience, are you declaring that you are blessed or are you declaring that I am nothing at all? Iba po yung mga taong alam nilang bless sila. Kapag alam nilang bless nila, 
bless sila. Hindi yun blessing na, ay, bless ako kasi magaling ako, matapang ako, may, marami akong pera. Dahil alam nila kung sino yung source ng blessing. And I'm really encouraging everyone, the one who called Abraham to go there is the God who's calling him to fulfill that blessing that he prepared already to Abraham. And my prayer for everyone, ito po yung prayer ko, kahit anong sitwasyon na na-experience natin, I pray na i-appropriate natin that we are blessed. Tingin ka sa tabi mo. Tingin ka, tingin ka. Kahit mukhang nakasimangot yan. Tingin mo, tingin mo, nakasimangot pa yan. Bless yan. Sabi mo sa tabi mo, you are blessed. You are blessed. There's power in your tongue. Kung declare mo, hindi ako blessed, alam mo lalabas kang hindi blessed. Pero kung declare mo every day in your life that I am blessed at maganda dito. Dahil blessed ka, gagamitin ka pa ng Panginoon na maging blessing para sa ibang tao. How many of you here, you want to be a blessing to others? Come on now. Then you have to appropriate that you are blessed. How can you bless someone if you are not blessed? Di po ang hirap nun. Blessed kasi ako eh. Pero yung mukha mo hindi blessed. Oh, blessed. Bless ako, super bless. Kasi ganyan ka mag- I'm bless, bless ko. Grabe! Anong, alam mo, hindi nag-appropriate yung mukha mo sa sinasabi mo, I'm bless ako, I'm bless ako, bless ako. So, you have to appropriate it. Because God is the one who promised. He is able and He is willing to fulfill it. This is the calling of God to, for all of us. We are blessed so that we can be a blessing to others. Alam niyo po ba yung blessing to others? Ang sarap ng feeling yun kapag may nabibless ka ba yung ibang, ibang tao. It's not just tangible things, but even to your words. Pag nasashare niyo yung gospel to iba, sa ibang tao, sobrang nakaka-bless yun. The more you bless others, the more mapifeel mo na bless ka. Because the blessing of God will overflow in and through you. Sino narinig niyo na yun? Umaapaw. Yung blessing ng Panginoon sa atin, which is, we cannot contain it. And that is the promise of God for all of us. That is the calling God has for all of us. So, every day, pagkagising mo pa lang sa umaga, harap ka sa salamin, I'm blessed. <laughs> Hindi yung pagkagising mo sa galing, ito na naman tumukhang to. Nakabusangot na naman. Alam mo yun? Tapos lalabas ka, dami ko na naman kung ano na iniisip. No. Declare it. There's power in, 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 in the Word of God. That's why sabi doon, this is the calling of God. Your family is blessed and your family is a blessing to others as well. The second thing that I would like you to understand is the word obedience. Sometimes, ang daling i-appropriate yung, yung blessing eh. Pero meron tinatawag tayo obedience. Ano itong obedience? Obeying God's call requires faith in Him and His Word. Very important to. Sabi dito in verse 4, So Abraham went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abraham was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. In the next verse, And Abraham took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their possessions that they had gathered and the people that they had acquired in Haran. And they set out to go to the land of Canaan. When they came to the land of Canaan, and Abraham passed through the land to the place of the, uh, at Shechem, to Oak of Mori, and at that time, the Canaanites, Canaanites were in the land. There are three words that I highlight, na highlight ko dito. First is the word, uh, the word Abraham went. Second, set out to go. Pass through. Ito yung mga action words na ginawa ni, ni uh, Abraham. Lahat to in response to the call of God to him. Sabi dito, Abraham went. Ibig sabihin, he followed and obeyed God. And not only that, set out to go, ibig sabihin, they went and they continue yung uh, call ni Lord para sa kanila to the point even yung mga possessions nila, sinama nila. Imagine, sobrang hirap nun. Katulad na sinabi sa inyo, yung pag, nag, pag naglilipat kayo ng bahay, ang pinakamahirap yung maliliit na bagay, alam mo yun? Yung malalaking bagay, ang daling buhatin eh. 
minsan mabigat, siyempre mabigat talaga yun. Tas, pero yung maliliit na buhay, yung mga, mga buting-ting, yung maliliit na yun, ipapak mo pa yun, tas pagdating mo pa, paglipat mo, dun, i-unload mo na naman. Tas parang ang hirap talaga. And not only that, they pass through. Ano ibig sabihin pass through? They experience rough roads. Every time we will obey the calling of God, not every day, smooth, smooth sailing to. You will experience rough roads. Hindi lang yun, you will experience bumps. And not only that, you will experience winds. Marami kang may experience. And in, at that time, imagine they will travel miles away just for them to go to Canaan. At hindi pa uso ang MRT. Hindi pa rin po uso ang Grab. Hindi pa rin uso that time taxi or even personal car. They were walking, yung, some of them, naka barefoot. Yung some of them, meron sa kanilang yung parang sandals na sinusuot nila. Or sometimes they're using camel. Try to imagine with me, magbubuhat ka ng something, kunyari, nakatira ka sa, nakatira ka sa um, Boni, Boni Station, tapos pupunta ka ng Bulacan. Bubuhatin mo lang yun. Sama-sama kayo habang kumakanta kayo. So try to imagine with me. Ganoon yung picture na sinasabi ng Lord na I want you to obey me. And it takes faith. And even, not only faith, trust in the Word of God. When God promised something in you, the question is, will you obey? It's not a matter of how much you know in terms of the Word of God, but it's all about how much you obey. Will you obey the call of God in your life? Will you obey the call of God in your family? Ano to mga to? Simpleng bagay. When God is asking you to uproot your old you to a new life, will you allow God? Ano ibig sabihin nito? Yung mga wrong practices natin in the past. Wrong practices on how we, on how we um, handle and even live our life. Maybe some of you here, nandoon ka pa rin sa season na, alam mo yon, you're still living in confusion, you're still living in your past, at tung past na to nagihinder sa'yo in order for you to give your best to your family, to the point na feeling mo hindi ka na makapag-provide sa family mo, dahil wala ka, hindi ka magaling, sinner ka, na akala mo wala ng plan sa Lord sa buhay mo, I'm telling you, that's why God is calling you to go. And you just need to obey. And as you obey, yes, you will experience so many things. Doon po papasok yung tinatawag nating faith. Every time na naglalakad tayo together as family, every time na mapat- matatalisod ka, the good thing about our family, we're very family-oriented, someone can lift you up. Someone can help you to walk uh, with the walk of faith that you have. It could be your wife, it could be your husband, it could be your son, it could be your daughter. The question is, are you united as one to follow and obey the calling of God in your life? Um, ako po, bago magulang pa lang din ako, uh, I have a three-year-old daughter and a newborn. Ang dami ko pa rin natututunan. Ang dami kong bagay na hindi alam. That's why I always ask for mentors. Uh, mentors in terms of finances, in terms of paano i- i-upbring yung, yung daughter ko na three-year-old na sobrang kulit na. Tapos paano, uh, paano kaya alagaan tong lalaki? Lalaki yung pangalawa ko. So, lahat yun. If our heart is for us to obey the Lord, our God, then we will do everything that we can in order for us to speak blessing, encouragement to our family. Pero, ang tanong kasi dito, anong klaseng Ano pong klaseng aral ang binibigay natin? Like Abraham, when God called him to go and go to that promised land, ina-approve din po ni Lord yung decision niya in the past, yung when worship niya in the past, wrongdoings niya in the past, and even as they walk to that promised land, those things in the past can hunt them. Alam niyo po ba, ganun din tayo. Marami tayong gustong i-impress sa family natin, pero yung past natin sometimes nag-hinder sa atin. 
nagihinder sa atin in order for us to give our best to our family. That's why I'm encouraging you. I'm encouraging you to put your faith in the Word of God and most especially, to put your faith to the one who's calling the shot. And that is God. Pero po, mahirap po. Ito yung pinakamahirap. Mahirap i-impress yung faith natin kung tayo mismo, we're not reading the Word of God. I'm really encouraging you, everyone. This is the love letter of God. Ito po yung manual ng buhay natin. Ito po yung basis ng faith natin. Dito po tayo pwede kumuha at humugot ng lakas. Dito rin, ito rin yung pwede magtumulong sa atin in order for us to put, bring life to our family. Alam niyo po ba, merong story um, na isa sa mga kakilala ko. For how many times, as a family, wala na silang ginawa kundi mag-away, na mag-away, na mag-away. To the point na nakikita ng anak nila yung, yung pag-aaway nila. And every time nag-aaway sila, may empress pa sa anak nila. Hanggang dumating sila sa point in time na maghiwalay sila. For nine years, they're separated, living separately. Living separately, trying to find their lives, trying to, to create something for their family. Pero, when they had this encounter with the Lord, when they soak yung sarili na, sarili na sa, sa word ni God, at nung naintindihan nila kung ano yung calling sa buhay nila as, as family, and even na-remind sila sa, sa vows na meron sila, alam niyo po ba, after nine years, tung couple na to, they got reconciled. They tried to make things right, not because they just want to do it, but because they want to honor the Lord our God. At naintindihan nila kung ano yung tama. There's nothing impossible with God. Wala pong imposible kay Lord. That's why I'm encouraging everyone, dive in the Word of God. Ito po ang pinahawakan ni Abraham in order for him, even hindi po, siya yung, hindi po niya na-experience yung promised land, pero ayun pa rin yung pinahawakan niya. And not only that, as I end, alam niyo po ba isa pa pa sa ginawa niya, he worshiped God. Worship. Submitting to his calling through worship. Sabi dito in the next verse, verse 7, The Lord appeared to Abraham and said to your offspring, I will give you the land. So build, so he built there an altar to the Lord who, hap, who had appeared to him. And not only that, in this last verse says, from there, he moved to the hill country on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on, on the west and the eye on the east. And there, he built an altar to the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed on still going together to Negev. The Bible is telling us as they passed through, as they went to, as they experienced God, one thing ang hindi nila kinakalimutan. They're building an altar. Dalawang beses po sila nag-build ng altar. And not only that, hindi lang sila nag-build ng altar. Sabi dito, they called upon the name of the Lord. This is an encouragement for, for all of us. Every time na yung calling natin will be shaken, marami po tayo moments sa buhay natin na masashaken yung calling natin. Masashaken na bless tayo, masashaken na we can be a blessing. This Bible verse is reminding us that we can always go to God, remember all the promises that He answered, and at the same time, we can always go back to Him, submit everything to Him, and even worship Him. Speaking about worship, Alam niyo po ba, there's something in worship. Every time we worship our Lord, our, uh, the Lord our God, there's something internal that is happening in us. Nakakalimutan natin yung problema 
to the point that gagaroon ka ng peace and security that God can intervene in that problem. Hindi po katulad ng tipong iba yung worship mo, mag-worship ka, pupunta ka doon sa isang lugar, iinom ka, toma tayo. Ibang spirit yun. Di ba? Sometimes most of us, kapag, kapag hirap, dito tayo, eh, inuman na, na, inum na natin to para makalimutan natin. To be honest, makakalimutan mo. Pero pagkagising mo, masakit pa ulo mo, hindi, hindi na wala problema mo. But every time you worship God, doon po papasok yung hope. Doon po papasok yung i-remind tayo ni Lord about His promises. Kaya no matter how bumpy the road was for, for Abraham, he never stopped to put an altar remembering who God is and he always submit yung sarili niya into worship. That's why always be reminded that God called us to worship and appropriate His promise. We are called, blessed, to be a blessing. And this is what we're going to do. I would like everyone to stand up. Tayo po tayo. We're going to worship God today. As we worship God, allow the Holy Spirit to minister to all of us. I really don't know the condition of your heart. I really don't know what is happening to you and to your family. I really don't know the very cry of your heart. But one thing I'm so sure of, alam ng Panginoon ang detalye ng buhay mo. Alam ng Panginoon na dito kong area ka nahihirapan. At alam ng Panginoon na kaya mo siyang lapitan muli at i-declare yung greatness niya. That He is greater than anything else that even a small fire, yung fire, kinanta natin kanina, eto yung i-cry out natin kay Lord. Lord, sa kadiliman na nararamdaman ko ngayon dun sa sitwasyon ko, kahit little fire lang, Panginoon, it's more than enough for me to go and appropriate the calling that you have for me for me to obey and put my faith in you and trust your, you as well. And finally, for me to worship you no matter what the condition of my heart. Can we just take this time to worship Him? You take a little fire and make it a roaring flame you revive our souls and make them burn again. You take a little fire and make it a roaring flame. Light our hearts like a furnace burning for your name. You take, you take a little fire and make it a roaring flame.
make it a roaring flame. Light our hearts, light our hearts, light burnings in for your name. I just want to pray for a group of people today. Maybe you are here right now. You are in a position or in a condition that there's emptiness in you. And you know that, Lord, there's no way, there's no way out. The only way in order for me to get out of this is once you burn that desire na hindi tama. Once you burn that, that, um, that problem that, that I'm encountering right now. If that is you, alam mo, hirap na hirap ka na. And you need that little fire from the Lord for you to find hope, for you to find to find peace for you to dream again and even declare the promises that God has for you but everybody close your eyes and bow your head if that is you I would like you to raise your hand and I'm gonna pray for you wow God says that hand Lord you see the hands of these people na nakarace Panginoon Acknowledging that they can do anything in their condition right now. Lord, I pray that you will just intervene. Whatever they are experiencing right now, whatever burdens or load that they are carrying right now, to the point that they cannot even go to the promise that you've given them, God. Lord, I pray that you will just remind them that your grace is so sufficient for them to overcome this problem. Lord, thank you. Because I know it is you who will rekindle that fire of faith in order for them to start to declare that I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. Lord, thank you. Because of that little fire, testimonies will arise. Lord, marami marami po salamat. You put down your hands. And finally, look up here. If you are here, you know that God has a promise in you. Like, Mo, like, like Abraham. He doesn't know God that much, but he obeyed. Maybe God is speaking to you. You don't know God that much pa, to the point that you ha- don't have a relationship with Him. Maybe you know Him by name because of the culture, culture that was um, impressed to us. Alam mo may Jesus. Pero yung relationship na kaya mong obey si Lord. Nasasabi mo, Lord, you are my Savior and you are my Master. If that is you, no looking around, close your eyes, bow your heads. If you want to surrender your life to God and you know God is speaking to you and telling you, my son, my daughter, I want you to experience my love for you. If that is you, you want to surrender your life to God, in the count of three, I would like you to raise your hand and I'm going to pray for you. One, two, three. Raise your hand. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For those people raising their hands, I would like you to pray after me. Lord, thank you for calling me in this place. I know it's not an accident. You want me to have an encounter with you. A real encounter. Lord, I'm sorry for all the things that I've done in the past. And right now, I declare that you will forgive me. I'm a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come. May you bless everyone na nag ng hand, Panginoon. Thank you, God, for the newfound faith that they have in you. You may put down your hands in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Let me just give a hand to God. For those people watching and tuning online, if you pray that prayer, I would like you to type the word connect so that we can reach out to you. Alam niyo po ba, sobrang sarap lang na alam natin na nasa circle tayo ng Panginoon. I hope that we will choose to obey the calling that God has given us. And definitely, we will never stop worshiping God 
Can you just lift up your hand? Let me just speak a prayer and blessing to everyone. Lord, maraming maraming pong salamat for teaching us and reminding us that we are blessed in your name. And you called us to be a blessing, God. Lord, hindi po kami magiging set aside lang. Hindi po kami wala lang, Panginoon. Kundi anak mo po kami, Panginoon. We are your sons and daughters. That's why every day, we will appropriate every promise you have given us. Lord, thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your care. Thank you for your plans. And thank you for the great calling that you have deposited for all of us. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen and amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. Don't forget, next week po, we're gonna celebrate Father's Day. Invite your friends, family members, and even your classmates and office mates. Have a great, have a great day po.